I'd like to talk about my platform briefly. My name again is Amber Barrett, and my platform is STEM not only for men, encouraging girls, uh, especially girls, but also uh, boys as well, to participate in engineering fair. At, by the age of fourth grade, girls start losing confidence in science and math, as, in, as many of you know. And by participating in the engineering fair, girls have the opportunity to look for solutions in their community that they would like to solve using engineering fair. In 2011, I authored, or I uh, participated in the International Sustainability World Energy Environment and Engineering Project Olympia in Houston, Texas, which is an international engineering and science fair, and placed third internationally. Actually, Morgan Barron, who's my sister, um, placed third just this last weekend there as well in engineering. And after that experience, I decided I wanted to offer an engineering fair curriculum to provide students with the opportunity to uh, innovate pro solutions to problems they see in their community. So, as now, I'd like to introduce the opening keynote, Susan Madsen. Uh, Dr. Susan R. Madsen is the Orrin W. Woodbury Professor of Leadership and Ethics in the Woodbury School of Business at U Utah Valley University. Susan has been heavily involved for over a decade in researching the lifetime development of prominent women in prominent women leaders and has a host of books and articles published for this work. In the past year, Dr. Madsen released six briefs through the Utah Women Leadership Project, which she founded, on Utah women in leadership in all sectors and settings. Overall, Susan has authored or edited five books and published nearly 100 articles, chapters, and reports. She presents them in local, national, and international settings. In 2011, she presented in NGO sessions at the United Nations in New York and Geneva on women, leadership, and education, and was also invited an invited panelist at the New York Times at the New York Times. Susan was recently recognized as one of the 2013 30 Women to Watch in Utah Business Magazine, one of the 2014 Fabulous 40 in Utah Valley Magazine, and a 2012 Salt Lake Chamber Pathfinder Awardee. She recently finished a four-year project for the state of Utah to figure out how to get more Utah women to graduate from college. Dr. Madison received her doctorate from the, the University of Minnesota in Human Resource Development. I'd like to welcome you, Robin. very much and, and I'll click like anything, you know these women's things, we all click when we walk on those nice floors. So good to be here today uh, to be able to talk to you for a few minutes about uh, some of the issues that I'm just incredibly passionate about and I know a few of you in this room I speak a lot, many times a week in different places and many of you have heard me speak but uh, always with a new twist. But what I was asked to speak about today was really empowering the next generation of women leaders. They really wanted to start this with, even though I work in the STEM, sometimes in the STEM areas and so forth, to start this today with just a look at, at Utah and empowering women leaders more generally. I think that I think you'll hone down through the day into more STEM areas. So empowering the next generation of women leaders, specifically here in Utah, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, one thing that does not empower the next generation of women leaders or empower women here in Utah relates to some, in the past year and a half, some negative press that the state of Utah gets. For instance, this is about a year and a half ago, we hit the worst state in the nation in terms, like in this very prominent report that analyzed 50 states across the nation in terms of women in leadership looked at women in management positions through the census data and also women in our called political roles. And so we hit, and Utah got lots of press, negative press, I should say, uh, in terms of that. Then after that, we hit the 24-7 Wall Street on one of the worst, and in some ways, I mean, we were at the bottom and, and the worst in some ways, the worst states for women. Um, particularly, this one looked at the wage gap, which we have a big wage gap. Some of you, if you read any of that stuff, I'm quoted all the time on that. Um, and then, this is the one that drove me crazy, I'll tell you. This, this one actually made me a bit, I'll just say mad, irritated, <laughs> ticked off, whatever. And so with all of this data then, they said five places in the world, <laughs> in the world, that women should not travel. And 
I don't, I, I don't have the country, so it started with El Salvador, a couple of other countries where they kill women. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, four countries, and then the fifth was, and Utah. <laughs> I'm like, that is so, I love living in Utah. This is actually a good place to be. But it doesn't empower us as women and young women and girls to have us have some negative press like that. So the reason I'm bringing that up is we've got to make some changes. We've got to step up. We've got to do more. And I'm going to give you some tools and some resources to be able to do that. I uh, wanted to give you a little bit of background about my research and interests, and I have tons, tons of things, but just a few things in terms of empowering girls and women. I have studied for many years and have multiple books, studied the lifetime journeys, the, the lifetime development of leadership. So one of my books, I interviewed 10 of the women governors in the United States, and I studied their whole lifetime. So what did their parents do, their moms, their elementary school teachers? I coached for lots of years and played sports. I still play sports. I'm 53, I still play sports. Um, but I know the data around how beneficial sports and competition, speech and debate, I used to be a speech and debate teacher, um, are for the develop development of women. So I studied all of those things up through college and the college experience um, and how beneficial that is and so forth. And my passion is how can we raise more girls to be leaders. So that's why I've explored that. And then I've spent the last few years um, really looking at Utah data. I was asked by the Commissioner of Higher Education in 2009 to start the Utah Women in Education Project to help more women understand and the influences of women who, that could be parents, that could be you know, men, whatever, understand why women should go to college. We need more women to go to college and to stay in college getting graduate. So that's what I've been passionate about and done lots of research and lots of media and got lots of attention for us needing to do something about that. And then created the Utah Women in Leadership Project a couple years ago to release data on where we're at, just to stir up trouble. I stir up trouble. <laughs> uh, where are we at in politics? Ooh, here's Utah. Oh, here's the nation, not looking so great. Um, did one on nonprofits. We're actually pretty good on nonprofits, corporate boards, and in the business area, we're not so good there. And then I did education, K 12, and higher ed. So I have those reports. So that's a little bit about what I did. But my goal is really to empower and develop more new talk girls and women. Also, I do, I just had a global women in leadership book come out. I do global stuff as well. But for this conversation to empower and develop more Utah girls and women to influence and lead. have incredible passion on that, that topic. So that's the goal. So what I thought I would take just a few minutes today and give you some nuggets. When we talk about empowering ourselves, but empowering other people, which we, every single person in this room, I mean, we can't do this work just for ourselves. That's just not what we can do anymore. We have to develop ourselves continue to refine and develop in our influential skills, and then figure out how to lift and develop every other person, I mean, especially your girls and young women. So I'm gonna give you a few nuggets about education, because that's critical in empowering women to lead and influence, and then confidence. I know some of you have heard me speak on that already. I do a lot on confidence. Um, I was just in Vernal and Roosevelt this week, speaking to the community there on the confidence crisis in girls and women and understanding the confidence gap. Just giving you a couple of nuggets today. There's so much depth with each of these, but I thought I would give you some nuggets. And then just I have about three slides on some leadership elements I want to, want to leave you with. Again, the goal of all of these is, is how do we empower the upcoming generations and how do we continue to empower ourselves? So that's what I want to do. The piece of my education that I want to give you is one of the things when I was starting this work, I just had this gut feeling based on, I have four kids, one daughter, have, we have a climbing room upstairs, we have a pool, we have a big yard, we ended up, uh, uh, not a pool pool, pool, <laughs> um, big lawn, no, no room for a pool. Um, and, and had heard conversations throughout the years, and one of the things that I 
re realized first off and then found data to support these, <coughs> that we don't have young women and women and people who influence these groups understand why. Why should you really go to college and graduate? To some of you, you're like, duh. <laughs> but um, if you are a girl or woman in the state of Utah and you plan on staying home full time with kids, some, we have so many young women who really don't believe they're going to ever work for money after they get married and start having kids. And if you think that education is only about the economic reasons, some of you have heard this and read some of my work, so you know where I'm going. I mean, economic is important. I shouldn't say only or just. That's critical. But if you have that mentality and you don't realize all the other things that it's important for, then you can see why we have a lot of women saying, oh, you know, we don't have money. I guess I won't go. I don't really need an education. I have so much research on this, that, and I'll give you some resources on this. But what I thought, and I'm going to go fast, I'm going to give you, I have this brief called The Value of Higher Education for Women in Utah. And it goes through, not original data for me, but looking at the literature and what the studies have found. And this is powerful information to get to girls and young women here in the state of Utah. So there's economic reasons, health and well-being, civic and, and community engagement, parenting, intellectual and cognitive self-development. I'm going to go really fast on this, <laughs> all right? I'm, I'm happy to give, give you my slides if you're interested. For economic, all of these are based on academic, rigorous research. Earn more money. Be prepared to financially support self and family. Have better job opportunities. You're like, yeah, this makes sense. Uh, gain access to better health care and related benefits. Have lower risk of unemployment. Actually, there's, there's many health and well-being. Actually, women who are more educated live longer lives. And I don't have it up here, but one of the most interesting findings when I was doing this work, a study went out of Stanford, came out of Stanford, that said, and this is not a benefit when I checked up my husband, actually, <laughs> but the benefit was that men who were married to more educated women actually lived longer. Uh, so if you're not happy with your husband, that's not necessarily a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next one. Oh, so many studies. People that are more educated have a healthier um, lifestyle, and you can see all of those things. Are less overweight or obese. Health and well-being, more things. Overall happiness and life satisfaction. More resilience and less depressed. And by the way, I mean, these are very academic, rigorous studies. By the way, some, a lot of these don't kick in at the certificate level, and I don't think, I mean, certificates are important, but I always say, then keep going. Um, some of the associates, but a lot of them really are found at that bachelor's degree level. That's where a lot, the most come in. More resilient, less depressed. There's all kinds of mental health studies on these kinds of things. Civic and community engagement. More educated women participate more in civic and community activities. Voting, donating blood, filling leadership positions. Just being more involved. More educated people do that. Parenting. Overall, more educated people give birth to healthier babies, spend more time reading to their children, prepare children better academically for school, have children who participate in extracurricular activities, provide healthier lifestyles, have more flexible work, have more children. So, so one of the things I say, I've been quoted a lot saying, is that more educated mothers have more educated sons and have more educated daughters. That's a real benefit for society in general, but for families. And then there's a number of things. Um, the more education, the more lifelong learning skills, more intelligent knowledge, teamwork, uh, verbal skills, critical thinking skills, qualitative and quantitative skills. Um, the whole self-concept and self-understanding increases with education. Leadership, you can see those things. Uh, again, self-esteem, openness to diversity. There's a ton. I started skipping things because I got tired of reading. <laughs> <laughs> but my point, even though these are, are overwhelming a little bit and I'm talking fast, is that it is important economically. But there's so many reasons you should still get an education even if you choose not to work. And some people have the misunderstanding that 
that most women do, do not work in Utah, and the statistics are otherwise. We have a lot of women that work. We have a lot of women who are uneducated or part-time for very low money, hence part of the wage gap issue. Um, so the reason I put this first, education and my research beyond this, in terms of preparing women for, for leadership, and that's what we're talking about, you know, empowering women to step forward and be prepared to lead. Getting a college education, are you following me, is super important right now. I mean, it is important. It will continue to get important. Are you, or get important. It will continue to be important as we move forward. And when we empower ourselves and empower girls and young women to understand this and actually go to college right after high school and stay in college, um, and if they go on an LDS mission, which I did, don't wait a semester and work when you get home. Get right back into college. There's a big mistake with that, that piece right there. Um, there's so many things. We do have, the data has said, and I did extensive studies around the, the state, that there's a lack of urgency. The women say, oh, I'll do it later when my kids are, you know, in school or something. What happens when you don't do it when you're younger? You don't. Oftentimes, and those, there's some of you I recognize that work in higher education, oftentimes at UVU, the women that come back, what do you think? Been through divorce. Been through, there's a lot of those situations when they come back. Um, and completion, I just wanted to make a quick comment about that. One of the big ahas of the research I've done on education is that we found that so many women in Utah, their goal was to go to college, but not graduate. No, I'm just supposed to go. <laughs> I, I, we heard story after story, qualitative and quantitative. Oh, no, I didn't think I was supposed to graduate from college. I know that sounds like duh, um, but, but we found, ex, I mean, huge amounts of evidence. So in my research and on the websites, and I'll pass some stuff around. Well, um, I have to leave right, right at, at 10, so I'll come down to um, got another couple activities to do today. Um, but some real, oh, one other quick thing before I switch to the next one is this integration. What we found is there's, uh, and I say they do not live a life of integration. They think once they have their first baby or something in their life, it's all about this. And then when I get in this phase of life, it's all about this. So no, I can't have a baby and actually go to college. Ah, uh, actually there's online classes, there's evening classes. You can go part time, there's all kinds of options. Not all or nothing. So there's a lot of information in this and getting your education and helping other people see you need a college education is a critical foundation for more women to lead in the state of Utah, whether that's in their homes or, or communities or, or in professional roles and so forth. So are you convinced? Can I move to number two? Yeah. My other ones are not as long. So. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I've got like three slides on confidence, which which I just spent two hours with a group uh, doing a workshop in Vernal. Uh, uh, but I wanted to, to say number two is confidence. I mean, we have to have more girls and young women and even ourselves be more confident to be able to lead an influence on life. We've got to continue to work on this. And I'll tell you, the research I've done has helped me. And I'm a pretty assertive woman. <laughs> but it's helped me understand myself more. It's helped me understand the gap between how women work often in confidence in men, and it and really empowered me. And I'm one that studies this all the time. So how much more could that help other people if we can help and lift them? Evidence shows that women generally are less self-assured than men, have more self-doubt, have more anxiety in leaving their comfort zones, overthink and don't let go of defeats. Shocking. That's shocking. You know? Have hurt feelings longer than men? That's a real shock. I know no one knew that. <laughs> Judge themselves harder than men. Uh, take longer to get started. Again, after failure, don't use failures. There's, there's evidence. And interestingly, this is found across cultures, incomes, ages, professions, and generations. So not even just in the United States. We're not talking just about Utah. There's some things. Why? It seems like that's not fair, is it? Um, and, and uh, so I'll tell you, I think it's on the next slide. But one of the things we talk about are just different things that we do in our communication. Perfectionism, deflecting praise, so different things. These are the things that, 
that I speak about at my workshops. Uh, but why? We study deep into some genetics, but even socialization and how we're raised. There's so much fascinating uh, uh, research on just the playgrounds, what, you, what girls and boys do on playgrounds. Um, and, and boys get criticized eight times more in elementary school than girls. And we say, oh, those poor boys. Guess what? They're in business now. That's all for their advantage because now they can let things roll off their shoulders. Their shoulders. They're like, yeah, I'm good. I want you girls. I get offended, <laughs> you know. There's some interesting plays in that area that help us understand. And then choice. And we look at the percentages. How much is genetics? How much is upbringing? How much is choice? Interestingly, when you get into cognitive therapy and some of those areas, there is still a big chunk that is choice. No matter how you were raised, no matter how your genes ended up at birth or whatever, there's a big chunk that is up to us. And we can influence that, and we can influence that in girls and uh, people that we're trying to help rise up. And a few, let me see the time real quick. Oh, 10 minutes still. <laughs> um, so strengthening confidence, these are some of the things we talk about in my workshops. I'm just giving you a few nuggets, few ideas on how to do these. Uh, how do we strengthen confidence? Develop a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset. Just we need to change. We need to continue to grow. We need to continue to learn. I really work with my students in my semester classes, and I about halfway through, there's always a few that are stuck. I had an older man this semester who was a police officer, came back, and he was, Ugh. And it took me about four weeks of reflections online, and then he just, woo, <laughs> it was just beautiful. It bring a tear to a person, not in front of the class. So. Um, um, rumination cycles. You guys all know rumination. Women, and there's some hormonal things. There's, we ruminate. Something happens, someone's rude to us. Do we let it go? We're like driving home. You know, my husband will be over it, and we're like, oh, it's a waste of time, women. It's just a waste of time. Um, um, focus on we instead of me, fail, struggle, risks. Those seem like bad things, but actually learning how to fail, giving your chance. I mean, the whole confidence is about taking action. The more we stay back and be a perfectionist and say, oh, I'm, I don't, I'm not perfect, I don't want to step forward, the less confidence we have. The less we're forgiving of ourselves, the less we're compassionate to ourselves. We beat ourselves up, right? The lack of self-compassion um, um, really restricts us from gaining more confidence. Does that make sense? Because we don't want to fail. Actually, failure can be the best thing and learning how to deal with that. Because when you grow, you know, I have a lot of women that I work with that want to stay in their comfort zone. Growth doesn't happen in your comfort zone. Growth happens when you're, I'm like, look like I'm ready to run. <laughs> Growth happens when you go outside your comfort zone. That's where you're uncomfortable. I say to my students, if you're comfortable in my class, I'm not doing my job. I am not. It's when you're uncomfortable outside. The, but when you're in that zone, you have more risk of failure. And when we don't want any failure, are you following this logic? So if you learn to take the failure and give yourself credit, just say, dang, I did that. I failed. That sucks. <laughs> but I did that, and I can do this, and I repeat go and succeed. So there's all kinds of things. Embracing struggle, uh, learning how to do that, taking risks, and discouraging pointless perfection. So first one was, uh, back to the, what my topic was. How do we empower our future generations and us and us to be more influential, to be more, you know, have more skills and, and lead? One, let's get through our education and keep going. Two, let's work with ourselves and others on confidence. And then the whole piece of leadership. So I just have a few slides with this. Um, I have studied and I'm fascinated with the aspirations to lead. I haven't done a specific study in Utah, but I would, I know I studied education, and we in Utah have women with lower aspirations than the nation to even go graduate from college. 
if you don't have aspirations to graduate from college, you're not going to graduate from college. You have to have aspirations. If you don't have aspirations to lead, you're not going to lead. You're not going to do the stuff to prepare yourself to lead. I think that's where one of the reasons, not one but the only, the thing that we're stuck with here in Utah is our girls, you know, don't see that they, they don't see enough examples, so they don't know women can lead an influence, first of all, and then they don't aspire. Uh, so that's critical. Research shows, though, that women are as effective and successful in leadership. I mean, some people think, well, men do. No, I know the research. <laughs> and in some ways, there's certain things that women exceed men in terms of generally leadership capabilities and skills. Girls who want to struggle more envision them themselves as leaders. And actually, it's called the theory of leadership identity. If you can't even identify and see somebody that looks at all like you, and gender is important, right? And race can be important too, different elements. Then you can't even identify yourself. You can't even see yourself. So somehow we need to change that. Uh, women are significantly less likely than men to view themselves as qualified for leadership. Okay, men, they have 50 or 60 percent of the what it takes to to uh, run for office or apply for a promotion. No, no. I'll do that. Uh, not women. We want to be, it's about 95 to 100 percent, or else we're not going to step forward. What does that mean? More women are not in leadership. That's the bottom line. Uh, women have different motivations to lead. There's other barriers, but also opportunities, just the so social attitudes. Um, we have a really strong, everybody does, but of just a, of what roles Oh, men should be doing this. Women should be doing this. And that comes very naturally. Uh, fear of failure, like I said, lack of confidence, fear of judging. Uh, women do that. And we, we have that really strong. Women want to be judged. Because someone will think this, or someone will think this. Well, first of all, most of the time people aren't thinking anything about you. <laughs> so, so don't worry about it so much. Uh, so that's a few things. I love this Eleanor Roosevelt book. No one can make you feel it very well. So what can we do in terms of the leadership? Help girls and women understand the importance of becoming a leader and teach them um, that they can and should lead. Provide them with experiences that they can eat, increase their aspirations. So I'm saying we need to do the work of aspirations. Teach them to network and provide mentoring for them. Create developmental opportunities that help girls and women see themselves as leaders. Help girls and women understand their own strengths. I will tell you that piece right there, what I've discovered, I haven't lived in Utah my whole life, and I'm part of the culture. I, I'm a Mormon Catholic woman, I served a mission. I'm part of that culture. But when I moved back, there's a different thing in Utah, even within my religious culture. I just do not see women understanding and knowing and being proud of their strengths. I mean, that's, I get a little teary-eyed. I know we're not in church, but I still get teary-eyed sometimes. We need to understand our strengths, not for ourselves. It's good for ourselves, but, but it's good for our employers. It's good for our families. It's good for the community to know what you are made of, what your soul, your mind is made of so that you can serve and lift other people. It's a gift for you to know your strengths and for you to share those strengths. Um, there, you got my pitch. <laughs> tear, but I kept them back. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then, um, I'm uh, tapping more girls and women. And what I mean by that is, oh, uh, two minutes. Okay, <laughs> what I mean by that is what the research clearly in the state of Utah, but nationally, internationally, I, I run, I'm running a global conference on women and leadership the next month in California, I do a lot of work on that consistently, consistently, what the research has said, my own and others, that women need to be tapped more than men. And what that means is, and that's what I mean is this, you say, because women won't even think of doing a promotion or run for office or whatever, or say, I'll be on this committee or whatever, because they think they're not prepared. They think they're not good enough. I mean, one of the favorite things when you go to perfectionism conferences with therapists is they talk about 
natural women say, I'm not good enough. Men don't say that. They say, well, I didn't get the job because the dang economy. <laughs> the dang CEO. He didn't like me, but it's his fault. And we say, I'm not good enough. All right? But when we have, and my research said at least one, two is even better, a woman or a man coming up and say, you should put in for that woman you should run for office, you're smart, you've got the passion, you've got what it takes, that's all it takes. And then many women will say, oh, <laughs> I could do that, I could, you don't know how powerful that is, absolutely powerful. Sometimes we look at people and we say, you're so smart, you're whatever, but we don't, I mean, we don't say it, we think it, right? Because we think she knows. <laughs> Oftentimes, I mean, sometimes people say things and I'm like, I didn't know I was extra special in that area. Um, um, it's critical for us to lift girls and women by helping them see their gifts, their strengths, and their talents. So that's, um, that was, I know I'm just giving you little stuff here and there all over the place. But one thing, and I was going to pass these around uh, soon, but would someone help? Uh, would you do that? Let me tell you what I have, and then I'll finish off. Um, I have three different things. You're welcome to take or leave uh, them. Uh, one of them is a thing about the, the website that is about the education work that I do. It's got briefs, it's got videos, things that you can use in your families. It's got religious quotes from, from LDS and you, and you did Catholic, um, just from leaders in those churches. So if you're interested in the website of that, uh, another thing is, I don't have the website of my leadership project, but I have my business card and on the back, I'm very, I don't have a big budget, so <laughs> I have the website of the different projects. I have another project I do in Utah, so you're welcome to thread that. And if you're interested, I sent out a monthly email, you've been on that for a long time, um, that gives events and briefs and some different things here. Welcome to send me an email about that. And then I will tell you, my math people, and yeah, I think this is the coolest thing, maybe not for you in the room, but I will say, you should have someone else in your life, a woman that has not gone back to school or is scared to go back to college. This is a free summer online math refresh, oh, refresher <laughs> class for people can take it at home. So I don't know if it would be good for this group, but I would challenge you in your neighborhoods or your churches or someplace. There's a woman that hasn't had confidence and is scared to death to walk into UVU or the University of Utah or Westminster or whatever. But maybe because a lot of them, because they're scared of math. You guys are not thinking, right? So this is one option. Uh, so you get all of them? You do. So I don't know if you want it, but I'm starting to thank you for passing those around. So let me finish up. I know I'm over now, but let me finish up with one of my favorite quotes that I use. So before I do that, just back to bringing it together. So again, empowering. How do we empower ourselves and girls and women to be more influential and lead? Let's get them in college. Let's keep them in college till they graduate. Let's help with confidence. And let's help them aspire and think and understand that they can be leaders. Each time a person stands up for an idea or acts to improve the lot uh, of others or strikes out against injustice, she sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring. Those ripples build a current that can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that women in Utah have oppression and resistance, we have some. But what I'm saying is, if all of us lift each other, do our part in small ways, in big ways, we're going to change things. There's no doubt. In fact, this state has no chance against women now. There's too much going on. There's no way. And the last thing I want to say is that, and I, and I say this in some other speeches because I'm just passionate about this, is that, particularly here in the state of Utah, we don't have the luxury anymore, get a little teary-eyed here, to say, you know, you have leadership skills and 
you're an extrovert, so we can work with you. And maybe you, you know, we don't have that luxury. I have worked with nonprofits in groups across the state. I've spoken to the Domestic Violence Coalition, women who have gone through abuse in amazing ways that I never have seen in my life. Refugees. So many groups in this state that need help. People that need help. We don't have the luxury anymore to just pick and choose. Every girl in this state, every young woman, every woman needs to develop confidence, needs to be educated, needs to step forward and lead. And we need to help do that. Whether that's leading in the homes, whether that's leading in churches and PTAs, whether that's leading you know, whatever, in the legislature, for heaven's sakes, we've got to get more women in the legislature. Whether well, that's leading, I've done some work in the United Nations. I don't care what it is. We must step forward and help others do the same. Thank you.